the one the one real big moment came actually um, after the first tour in the U.S. in 1972, doing Thick as a Brick. I'd got a little upset in 1969, 1970, because we started getting a lot of riots and bad things happened, in Amer only in America. Well, actually not true, we had a few in Italy as well. But then the Italians having a riot, it's just kind of, it's like a football game, it's just a bit of fun, you know. But in America it was ugly, it was, it was bad, and it was still caught up with a lot of tensions and prejudices between the cops and the hippies. And it obviously had echoed very badly in, the, in terms of the race riots and so on. The Vietnam War, all of these things came, had a very heavy impact on the, the relationship between the village elders, <laughs> the conservative you know, police, politicos, and the new generation of kind of post-hippie folks who just wanted a different America. You know, bring the troops home. So it was a, in, in some ways, you know, there, there are elements back then that are being echoed today. Not that Iraq and Vietnam were directly comparable, but they certainly have, you know, there's certainly um, points of comparison. And, um, you know, that was when we began. And there were some ugly times in America, you know, bad things happened. People got killed quite often, you know, and people got arrested a lot and beaten up. And, you know, a lot of blood and a lot of bad stuff going on. And, and we were in the middle of all that. I found that distinctly unpleasant. And, and I found, I suppose, the impatience of certain audiences um, disagreeable when we were doing the Thick as a Brick tour, because a lot of that had acoustic stuff, you know, going on. And I couldn't hear what I was playing for people whistling and shouting and throwing things on the estate. It, was, it, was, um, it wasn't enjoyable. I came back from the US tour doing Thick as a Brick, said, I don't think I can do this anymore. This is not what I really want to be doing with my life, fighting to try and make the music, for me to hear it and enjoy it. And um, to some extent, I think when we came to do the album after that, a passion play, it was much more electric and aggressive. It didn't, didn't leave any spaces for people to hoot and holler and interfere with, with the playing. It was... Um, By design? Yeah, by, by 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 design, but not you know not not I think more 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 sort of subconsciously, but certainly I I think it became a very dense album. I didn't want to leave spaces. When you left spaces, people would whistle and shout, and that's very disrupting. When you you know you, it's very disruptive. You're trying to play something that's quite difficult, and where you're trying to hold a note or give some expression, and then people are just shouting or talking or hollering through it. You know, it's just. That's very dis disruptive, and I, I, that 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 was that was '72. Um, stories that Jethro Tull quit in '73 after a Passion Play was reviewed in Melody Maker entirely untrue. That never happened. That was reported as happening by our manager, who concocted a story with Ray Coleman from the Melody Maker that Jethro Tull quit in order to get a second headline story the following week. I mean, that's just. That's something that was done without my knowledge. I was very angry about it and very quick to say that's you know that was a step too far in terms of um, um, music paper proprietors and uh, and those representing us you know thinking that you know a front page story is a front page story whether it's good or bad. It was a very harmful comment. It really made us look stupid. But we we certainly had no intention of quitting at that point. My own, the only time I ever felt like that's it was was a year before that, and um, and so uh, yeah, there's been a lot of times that I'm that I find it quite testing what I do, um, not because of necessarily just the audience, but you know, testing because of environmental factors: heat, cold, humidity, lack of humidity. Um, technical problems. Um, it's, it's you know it's not a, it's not a it's not something that you do day after day, night after night, and come off thinking, wow, that was great. You come off with a, with a feeling when you walk back into your dressing room of, well, some of that was that was really good. I enjoyed that, and that was okay. And then that bit was a real stinker. You know, I played a wrong note there, or something just just didn't work. And you know, it's it's a mixture of of emotions, and and there is no perfection. There is no 
Now, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm a pragmatist. There, there is no perfection. I cannot make a perfect concert. How much I try, however much I try, I'll never get there. But, you know, I go on stage to try and do, you know, try and nail it, try and do a bit better than I did the night before. And some things I, I might sort out. And something else that I played fine last night, I screw up tonight. You know, that's the way it is. But, you know, it's a challenge. It's about a kind of focusing yourself. And you go out there not competing against somebody on the other side of the tennis net. It's not like being at Wimbledon. It's not a gladiatorial sport. It's not, it's not being a, like being a Formula One driver, you know, some guy sitting next to you in the, in the starting grid, you know. Um, you, it's, it's not like that. You're, you're, you're not fighting anybody else. You're, out just, you're, you're, you're actually going out to take, uh, to take up arms against your own um, best performance to date or your own idea of what you should be achieving on stage. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the, the competition. That's the competitive nature of it. It isn't against somebody else. It's against you and what you've achieved in the past and what you think you can achieve in the future. You win some, you lose some. There's upside, there's downside, there's no perfection. It's just do the best you can and see if you can uh, you have a little fun along the way and, and hopefully the, 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 the typical concert is more, is more upside than downside. But the day that I ever walk off stage saying, yes, then that's probably a good time to retire.